So, um, a fun story about me. My first big break in showbiz, if you will, was when I was in college. And um, I went to college in New Orleans in the 90s. Um, and it was like when their film was booming. When, it, like, Interview with the Vampire, JFK was, you know, um, it was just getting off the ground and there was talk of tax incentives and stuff. And I went into intern uh, in the extra, is in the background casting office uh, for uh, the client, Joel Schumacher's The Client. And it was, what was great about the experience is like, boom, right away, you got to start calling people. They have a scene to fill. It was a barroom scene with Anthony LaPaglia. And you had, to, you had to call through all these people, see if they would show up. This is what you got to wear. This is what time you got to be there. It was $35. Uh, and then at the same time, while I was there, I said, hey, I've never been in a movie before. I, I grew up in Vermont. They did Funny Farm up there. It was a big deal with Chevy Chase in the 80s. I, it was my birthday. I was like, I'm not going to any casting thing on my birthday. Well, I regretted that. So I turned to them and I said, do you mind if I do this scene as well as an extra? And they were like, sure, yeah, go right ahead. But it, but um. Let's, let's start with Hardigan and Lessie, you know, as far as those types of demands here. Uh, you've, I, I know you have four offices, Hawaii, California, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> fire me now. Uh, uh, you have four offices, Hawaii, New Mexico, California, and, and, and newly Georgia. And, and newly Georgia. But tell us, tell us about the demands here and in, in filling background actors and everything. And what's needed? So we have seen various needs, which is great. You know, from the time we first came out here, we did 12 Strong with Jerry Bruckheimer, and we're tasked with finding 2,000 Afghans here in New Mexico that could ride a horseback and fire a weapon. Um, <laughs> and so from that time to now, I've seen this huge growth from the... There was a staple show that seemed to always come through New Mexico. It was Westerns, and they had a, a vibe. Now it's increased tenfold to where... We're doing cop dramas that are representing LA here, uh, like Deputy for Fox that we just finished, where we are supplying uh, SWAT and officers and tactical personnel from the local police department. So there's been a huge increase in the needs here, and we're filling, I mean, Deputy alone, we hired over 5,000 background performers, over 13 episodes. Can a background performer actually make a career of it here? Is there so much production going through where they could do they could literally do this for the entire year. There is, there is, and collectively between the extras casting agencies and all the casting directors here, we've worked on increasing the rates to make it livable, so people that are interested here now can get their foot in the door and make a full-blown career just doing extra work. And the more the features and the TV shows and the studios continue to come here, it's just going to continue to grow. And let's talk about the diversity of actors here. Um, have have jobs for have acting jobs for Native Americans gone up over in, 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 in recent years with with the influx of production? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, New Mexico has always kind of been a hotbed for that type of production. You know, westerns, things like that. So the opportunities are there. But I feel like with um, with you know all of the different platforms and the and the productions that are that are happening now. Um, you know, and all of the diversity awareness that's coming, um, you know, that's just be coming up. I think there's a lot of opportunity, not just anymore, like what we call the feathers and leathers, you know, the period pieces, the Westerns, but it's like, you know, shows like Breaking Bad, it's like, you know, um, a Native American can play like a, a car salesman because this is like, a, you know, a society or community where we do have Native Americans as a part of the community and the population. And I think, like, um, you know, there was a science fiction movie here where it was kind of like um, Avatar-ish, uh, where it's like, oh, we want all these characters to kind of look, like, have an indigenous look. And there was a, recently a production that was going to film somewhere else, but after I met with them and talked about our talent pool, they decided to film here because this is where, I mean, we have West Studi, you know, his Academy you know, award-winning uh, Native American actor lives here in Santa Fe, you know, and it's like, and he's not the only one. It's like, this is kind of probably the largest um, uh, population of Native American talent uh, concentrated right here in New Mexico. So it's, it's been great uh, for, the, for the productions that come here that need that type of talent. It's also been, a, you know, there have been so many wonderful opportunities for that talent pool as well. 
Could you do you mind talking more about hostels? Because I know that was that was a very Im important film as far as as far as respect um, for the tribes portrayed in that in that film and and also in cast. First, I have to say, Joedna and I worked on hostels together. <laughs> so I did the indigenous casting, and Joedna did the non-indigenous. I guess that's, we're going to call you non-indigenous casting, <laughs> casting director. <laughs> I can do both. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, Scott Cooper, the director, was really fantastic. And he said from day one, um, I, want, I want to you know, respect the people. And he had um, cultural consultants. And we worked with Renee Haynes, who is a, another casting director who um, who's worked her entire career, as have I, you know, specializing in Native American talent. So he really pulled together um, a team of people that he trusted, and we all worked in conjunction to make sure, you know, with, and with the communities and with the liaison and everything to make sure that um, he just wanted to make sure that we were getting it right. And um, I, I think they did a great job of that, you know, the kind of the two aspects of that, like who is the true hostel here and why. Do many reservations welcome filming? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody realizes how lucrative the film industry can be and um, how the, the economy is impacted positively uh, by the film industry. Everybody wants a piece of that pie, you know? Yeah. And um, t tell us about Hell, Hell or High Water. Yes. That's one of my favorite films. Thank you. Yeah. One of mine, too, actually. Um, <laughs> um, t t I mean, again, continuing the, the casting conversation, here, here in um, New Mexico, is it, um, how, how deep do you go into the pool here? How much is coming from LA? How much is coming from New York? Are you finding that when a film shoots here, is it like 80% New, ca New Mexican cast and 20% from just above the line actors? Or? It, just, it really depends on the script. And sometimes we'll still call in people from Texas as I started out in casting. Well, I started out in LA, but uh, for many years in Texas. And um, like Hell or High Water, uh, the T-Bone Waitress. I don't know if y'all remember that role or not. The, what don't you want? Oh, yeah. yeah. She, was, she was someone, when I read the script, I thought, oh my God, that's Margaret Bowman. How do I convince the director to hire her? And uh, she actually was from Houston and got to walk the red carpet with, with all the, they loved her so much that they flew her all around the country to walk the red carpet with the stars. But, um, and my staff was laughing at me during the casting of that because having grown up a cowgirl in Texas, I couldn't help a dialect coach. Because sometimes when, when it's a Texas project, people will come in sounding like a Georgia peach, and that's not Texas. So over and over again, they heard me say, no, it's what don't you want? <laughs> it's, you know, so um, yeah, but, but that director somehow trusted us a lot. And, and uh, uh, because of my background in Texas, and that was such a Texas film, and also Richard Hicks did the LA casting, and he and I are pretty close too, so there's, it's the trust factor that goes on with that. But more and more New Mexico is competing with LA actors, and we're getting to cast bigger and bigger roles. Uh, for instance, like Angelique's daughter, is right. now a series On regular Roswell. in Roswell, New Mexico, and we cast her here in New Mexico, right? And she's someone that I've cast since she was five, six, seven, or something like that. And the rumor goes, too, that Angelique and her husband, who is a really good Native American actor, met here in New Mexico in our casting office way back when we were doing The Lazarus Man, one of the very first TV series shot here in New Mexico. So, um, yeah, New Mexico sometimes will, will compete with L.A. Sometimes they'll look in L.A. and look here, and sometimes we win. Is there, is there uh, while the film schools are booming, are the acting conservatories as well here, and, as well as... Um, Not so much. We need more acting conservatories here. You know, I think we need more actor training here, and we need to, it's, it's something that Marie and I have even talked about, is producing some seminars where we bring in people who are on a, um, a higher level um, of experience and uh, 
to train our local actors. But that's something that I think is going to catch up pretty quickly and uh, bring in some LA coaches who, who work with the, the, the working stars. They need to be working with our New Mexico people, I think, so that we can get bigger roles. But I know, again, on, on Roswell, New Mexico, we are able to cast many recurring guest star roles. In, fa in fact, there's one role where the creators of the show liked this actor so much, he got blown up in the show, and they brought him back as his twin brother. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> You know, and created, you know, Grant Green became Graham Green, and they changed his hair just a little bit. How often does that happen? And that's a local actor, a recurring top of show, guest star role. Now, uh, so more New Orleans stories. Uh, when I was there, uh, my teacher was very close with Marion Doherty, and she came, and she spoke at the school. And every, all the local actors were at the, the edge of their seats <laughs> when she was there. She had just done Batman and everything. Yep. And a few things, one of the things she said was, um, she just, I, the question I'm leaning toward is raw talent. Uh, do, you, do you have great discoveries? You know, someone who's never acted before uh, that, that, that you can work with and present to the director. Have, have, you, have you found a couple of those for some key parts? I want to find more. In fact, we may, we may be doing an, uh, an open call soon. We're talking about doing it maybe virtually to, to find some new children. But on the, the first Tom Hanks movie we, we got to work on last year, we found this six-year-old girl that was just amazing. Just, um, it's like she had to be an old soul or something. And she was so amazing that, and she had to do an improvisation, and, and she had a gun pointed at her, and she had to be terrified, and improvise, and then after the audition, she actually came up to our reader and said, you did such a good job. <laughs> and she said, Mom, Six Mom, I cried. I cried, Mom. That was, was actually acting. my client, um, and she, she um, is the younger sister of a girl that I repped, and I went to a children's theater production locally in town and said, who is that little girl? And it turned out to be the little sister of somebody I already repped. So she's great. So tell us more about Mitchell and Associates. You were a SAG-AFTRA franchised agency. Um, again, going back to my New Orleans days, I remember like being in the casting office. They're like, "We need a stripper for this scene," and they go through, and they're, you know, you know, they want to talk about strippers. No, 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 no. I can no, do that because no. we're doing that right PC, now. But they, but basically, they would know exactly who to go to. Right. They right. were, they, you know, there, there right. were specific types that the director would be looking for, and they would. You know, they would know right away, I know who to call, I know, you know. Absolutely. You know. I think one of the keys to my job is knowing my, intimately knowing my actors well enough. I had um, a casting director who called me at 11 o'clock one day, and she said, by 2 o'clock, crying. By 2 o'clock, I that need. Me? No, it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> by 2 o'clock, I need as many women who are over 18 but look under, could be dressed as a goth, bring an electric guitar, and sing Amazing Grace badly. What was the movie? I had five. It was for Preacher. Oh, wow. And she ended up with a recurring, and one of my girls got it, um, Tabitha, and um, she w ended up being recurring. And it was like, I know exactly who to send. I know exactly who to send. And so um, that's the creative, artistic part of it for me, is knowing my actors well enough to know who can do certain things. What is, what is, is that, is that one of the record, like as far as like same day casting, is that that's up there for me i mean there's times when you know casting directors are like we showed them everybody that we that we thought they wanted and they're asking for more and um and then we have to bring more and show them because we're providing a service for the casting directors and they're providing service we're all running this gauntlet to you know bring actors into the into the project and so um so we don't have time to like Figure, you know, call 10 people and ask if they can play the violin or something like that. So it's a really important that we all are intimately equated with each other so we know what the abilities and talents are of the people here. And if there are actors in the audience, yes, move here. <laughs> really, we need you. And I, 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 we had a voicemail at our office this week from an actor saying, well, one of the agents told us that they already have everybody from L.A. when they come here. And it's like, what? 
That is so not true. We just we have so much opportunity here now, and we need more of you. We need more talented actors. So come on, get here. The amazing thing is we have so many wonderful actors here that have chosen to live here, that live here, make a living as actors, and those are the ones that are getting these recurring roles and these guest stars and all those, th the people that have put the time in, and I'm so proud of the acting community here. I feel like they've just, they just keep raising their levels of professionalism year after year, and that's what we're looking for, um, so that they're not going to LA to look for something that we, had, that we have here. Don't move to LA, come to New Mexico. And I live here. I work in L.A. as well. I have an agency in L.A., but I choose to live here and then go to L.A. when I need to and then come back. Um, I have a general uh, casting uh, question for, for, ca for the casting directors. Is if you see someone a couple of times and then they want to come in a third time and you're like, oh, no, you know, we've, we know what he could do. Do you, ever, do you ever, you know, that third or fourth or fifth time you see them, is there something new? Do, you, do, do they like, oh, I didn't know he or she had that skill set in them. Are there those huzzah moments? Yes, especially if they've been training. Right. Then, yeah. you know, we want to give them another opportunity, you know, to come in and, and show us what they've learned. And people do change and people do, all of a sudden they just get it, you know, and they, yeah, and then they're marketable and bookable and, yeah. And because our community is so small and we are such a family, that's Christian said that when he was talking about locations, is there are a lot of actors who desperately want the opportunity and really aren't there. And we can tell. We're like, we're going to bring him in a bunch of times because he's going to get it. You know, or she's really, she's so close. We just need to really work with her a little bit. And those people are, you know, malleable. We can work with them and they get up to par, so to speak. We love that, yeah. It's and there's a reason it, it, we're called casting directors. There is no such thing as a casting agent, you guys. There's a talent agent, you know. But casting directors, because we often direct talent to help them get to where they need to be, you know. Uh, you asked about diversity. I like to just think of it as inclusion, you know, more than, than looking for diversity. Let's just include every, you know, talented actor, no matter what color they are. It's like... There can be a Native American doctor, even though it doesn't say Native American in, in the script. If it's, you know, the best person for the job, why not? You know, but we've been known to, to even take an actor who is so close, like Marie said, and say, hold on a minute. Come here. I want you to watch your audition. Do you see how that's not believable? So I want you to go back and hit the mark. Just talk to us. Just you know, you are enough is one of my favorite fa phrases. And uh, let's see it again like you and I are just talking. And sometimes they just get it and they get the job. That just happened on The Harder They Fall. We did that with a, an older African-American actor who was just hokey and pho phony. And I had him come and watch his audition, worked with him a little bit. And then the very next job that he auditioned for with us was the harder they fall, and he was the first actor cast. And it's like, whew, now let's hope he does that on the set. No. <laughs> I think, too, we see so much growth in our talent pool so quickly because they have so many opportunities. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, have, we get, you know how it is in L.A. It's like literally 1,200 people will be submitted for each day player role, whereas here the talent pool is smaller. So it's like our actors are auditioning all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this learning curve that Joe Edna is talking about happens quickly, you know, because like our actors, they can be auditioning every week, you know, whereas in LA, unless you're up there, you're maybe not going in as often. And, and for the directors that, that we're seeing, I mean, I, wor I worked on a, a movie for Lifetime where the, the lead actress had played in a Tom Hanks movie, like woman number two, but in the Lifetime movie, she was she was a lead, you know, um, where it's like, okay, so in LA, everybody and their mother, including lead actresses, are competing for woman number two in a Tom Hanks movie. Here it's the locals. So it's like they're really getting to work. And so they're really, they're upping their game and so quickly. And, and what we've been doing is uh, we've been speaking to large groups of background actors and trying to elevate them uh, and move them into principal cast. So we're, we're, we go over everything they need to do, how to get an agent, headshots, resume, and especially training and uh, gaining experience. 
So, um, you know, there's so many opportunities here, and it would be wonderful to see the people who are just beginning and learning in background move up to be able to see these lovely people. Um, how often... Tell us a little bit more about the case when the, ex, when the extra moves up to the featured extra. What, what is that? You, I'm sure there's a million reasons, but what is usually the circumstance? Is it, is it a look or is it a spur moment thing where the AD is just going like this on the set? <laughs> you, you're going to say this one. Is right. it usually? Well, it's, it's a combination. There's so many reasons. There are some films that I've worked on that um, there's one that there were 65 people upgraded from background to principals, full on wow. residuals and, oh, wow. and everything. And then sometimes a director um, will, the way that the script is written, they'll look at me and it, it's, it, it reads as an extra, but he knows that it's going to be upgraded. So I just did that for Gus Van Zandt, 26 roles that were you know, basically extras, but we vet them and we make sure that they, they can act. And um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of gray area and people are upgraded all the time on set. And that was another thing that we're trying to let people know. Be ready, be professional, because you never know what's going to happen. What is the, um, I, uh, what was one of the, um, when I say crazy, I mean in a challenging way, in a good challenging way, was one of the most craziest productions to, to do background casting on, where it was just like, oh my God, like 300 people? Oh no, it's, it's always more than 300 people. We recently <laughs> <laughs> did... Um, Many shows in New Mexico, Army of the Dead, Messiah, and Stargirl, and it w they were all thousand-person days, multiple days, wow. with looks, too, and not just people, but people that, that we, we had to cast that crowd. So, but I would say Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, for me, I'm sure yeah. everybody's got their own. Excellent. Um, before we go, anything that uh, we can add about uh, casting in New Mexico? I always like to say, just keep it professional, because we are New Mexico. We constantly want to keep our standards as high as possible and our professionalism as high as possible. So we're really grateful that Dead Deadline came here, New Mexico first, so we could really showcase our awesome cast and crew. Yeah, I think I just would say, you know, that, that we've been around for a long time. I mean, when I met my husband in Joe and his casting office, um, this was in the mid-90s. So New Mexico has been around and we've been established for a long time and our talent pool, I mean, we have some old timers that have been, that we're still auditioning them, you know what I mean? And the new generation, you know, they're, they're kids now and people who, you know, it's just, it's, it's, we've been here and it's pretty solid. I think people should know that. In the last three years alone that we've been here and I've been lucky enough to work in LA, New York and Hawaii and it really experienced all the markets. And it's something I've said a million times, so I apologize to those of you guys that have heard it. The talent here work harder than anywhere else I've seen. They want to work, they want to be professional, and they want to do good. They want to show up for these producers and these shows. And it's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.